All right, this is Brent Hadlock again, TN Artist. If you're just now joining me, and uh, you need to make sure that you start with part one, this is part two of this painting. We have the basics of our underpainting put in here. We're using Art Rage to do this with, and we're using some custom brushes available from my Gumroad account. So let's dive right into part two, shall we? First thing I want to do is go back and work on some of these clouds. Uh, but I think for ease of reference for you guys, let me label some of these real quick. So we know what layers we're on. Okay. There we go. All right, so let's jump back to our cloud layer. We need to kind of pull this together just a little bit and start bringing the clouds to look more like actual clouds. Then get it scrubbed in and, and kind of desaturate some of these purples and so forth. So again, I've got my impressionistic cloud brush that I made. It's my custom one that you can get on Gumroad. I'm clicking Alt and selecting. to just kind of start scrubbing in some color here. Now if these are too purpley, take a little bit of yellow and scrub it over top because yellow is the complementary to purple. Get that kind of scrubbed in there and neutralized down. Decent amount. So the way these clouds are set up is, uh, I guess the easiest way to describe this. So think of a, of a, like a V. Okay. And so if the clouds are, um, let me switch to my pen tool, easier to see. So the clouds are almost set up like this. Okay. So as they, go away you can see the bottoms a little bit more like that so it's going to be built up so that they naturally are receding so I'm seeing the bottom of the clouds more and the sides so I'm gonna start laying in some paint here to kind of give that feeling of they're receding into the distance control Z all that I'm good so that's what I'm going to go with. So you'll see that I take and make kind of a uh, back and forth type motion. And that's to really try and get some of that feel that these are getting closer here and there and receding as they go off into the distance. Okay. Some of these I'll build out so that they're actually kind of standing in front of the others. I do recommend doing cloud studies as much as you can because it makes your life easier. Alright, so I've got these that are kind of going that way and down so they're almost coming up towards you. I'm going to have this one come across and kind of break that plane a little bit. So I'll take, since I've got some of this here. So I want to grab a little bit of this light blue. I'm making this motion. Circular motion. Okay. So 
So I'm circling this back so it gives the feeling that these clouds are kind of rolling in. Like so. Same with this one. Grab a little bit of black here. So without the line drawing, you can see where some of the starting to come in. I've decided to, since looking at this a little bit earlier, I think the light source is going to kind of be coming down through here, maybe you know, right about this way. So we'll highlight these clouds. over here real quick to this oil brush. Let's go ahead and let me put in some pure color top. Then I'm going to go to the palette knife and heavy blurred frosting. Just again this kind of motion. So and back to my other brush. So now the reason I did that was that again the oil brush puts down a little bit more paint and it doesn't quite blend as much. But again, we're still underpainting, so we're not trying to get necessarily the finished clouds, but just get an idea of where our light sources and stuff are. Okay, so let's leave that for a moment and work on some of the other areas that need some attention. And I recommend doing that, kind of work all over painting so you can really get a, uh, a feel for how it's progressing all over and uh, really kind of see what's going on with it. All right, so we are going to shrink this down a little bit. I know these are eventually going to be like pine trees. So 
So I want kind of this pointy feel to it, and I'm breaking up that um, edge a little bit. just a little bit more of an indication of trees, like so. Okay. I'm going to do it again. Down here. Again, this is just the underpainting. I'm not trying to get the finished trees yet, but I'm playing around with where my lights and my darks are going to be. So I have a good idea what direction I'm going to go, okay? But as these build, and painting's really about building as you go, but as it builds you start seeing where stuff is going to be. And it's a good way to kind of quickly lay in your path so if you're starting to get off from where you want the end painting to be, you know that quickly and you can start making adjustments. Okay. So that kind of gives us a little bit more of that. So we've got the cloud, we've got the uh, trees. So now what I want to do is I'm going to grab a little bit of this brownish color from the buffalo. And I want to lay in some splotches of color on the grass for where there's going to be shadows and highlights and stuff like that. Even kind of like where his shadow is going to fall. I know, again, you're probably sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, what is he doing? Why is he building it up this way? Um, and so forth. But again, that's one of the great things about Art Rage is that you can do it the way that you would do it traditionally. Let me show you this too, real quick, just so you can see that using these other brushes in case you don't want to use mine. So I'll just switch to one of these. You see, you get kind of the same smudgy kind of effect. Okay, so you don't have to use my brushes, but. I like my brushes, that's why I made them. So <laughs> I'll probably keep using them, especially for the underpainting stuff. I find they work really well. But I did want to show you some of that. Okay. So back to here. 
Here's an interesting thing too. So I can go back to eraser and click this eraser mode. I'm using the same brush, but now I'm going to take paint away. So like, for example, that grass was getting a little too tall for what I want. So I could just push it back down like so. Again, one of the fantastic things with painting digitally is being able to do that. Okay, so we've got that smudged in. Change this back to the cloud brush. shadows a little bit and by cool off I mean put in colors that are in the blue and purple ranges because you'll always find purple in a shadow put a few spots here and there for some of the others River real quick. There we go. Probably even make that darker as we go along so that it looks better up here to the buffalo. Now, one of the things I want to do is really define this guy. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to switch to my eraser. I'm going to push it back. Actually, for this one, I think I will go ahead and go with the hard edged just because it's faster. And I know I'm going to paint over this so I don't have to be overly worried about my edges because I don't want a hard edge, but I don't want it. I'm not worried about a soft edge at the moment. But I want to kind of rein this back in and keep that shape. the painting. moving the canvas by pushing spacebar and then clicking and dragging my cursor. Just so you know. There we go. That'll get his profile a little better. Let me do the same for these guys. You can also use the bracket keys. The left bracket key makes it smaller. The right bracket key makes it bigger. I don't tend to use those too much because... It takes longer than just clicking and dragging right or left.
Alright, for these guys, I don't need them to be overly defined. They'll probably stay pretty close to these blobs that I have here, just to find them with a little bit of light and shadow. Spacebar, drag it over. Oops. Um, and that gives us a little bit of a better silhouette to kind of see where we're at. Okay, so a couple things that I want to do real quick before we wrap up part two is I do want to kind of push his colors a little more. Now you can go over here to this little lock icon and lock transparency, and by doing that, let me grab something that would really show you, like this pen. And we'll just go with black. So if I do that, it means that now I can only color in what's painted. See? So that's really helpful for doing this stage. So I just lock the transparency, switch back to my brush here. And I really want to push skin tones for here because again this part is more of a chocolatey brown and I want to kind of shape some of the color I mean the, the, the form of him I'm just kind of blending my color here to get a, what I want. Okay. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these up close, but there are several places here in Tennessee that grow these guys because that was a big thing for, you know, um, growing buffalo and bison to... Uh, or bison burgers. Well, what people don't realize are a couple things. One, these guys are huge. Two, these guys are almost pure muscle. So they can flat out kill somebody and it barely take any effort. <laughs> so um, I grew up on a farm. I'd much rather have cows. But they are apparently, from what I've heard and talked with people, they are just not nice animals. They are, uh, and I think part of that is because they're not as domesticated, so they tend to be just wild. And people don't realize just how much of a wild animal they really are. And so they think, oh, it's like a cow. Because a cow, you can honestly train a cow to walk on a halter like a dog on a leash. We did it growing up. I mean, we used to always kind of mess with our neighbors because they're like, how, you know, our cattle were trained where you could whistle for them like a dog and they would come. Um, but you know, it's just bad lobbying response was all, <laughs> all it was. But um, our neighbors were always like, how do you get them to do that? I was like, well, you whistle and you give them food. But anyway, they, they were much more, um, domesticated. These guys are not. They will flat out kill you if you're not careful. Alright, so what I'm doing here is just starting to shape some of the color and the form. Uh, start shaping some of the form with the color that I'm painting. I'm trying to get a feel for where the light's coming from. All right, 
right, so that's kind of giving us that. I know this is still really cartoonish looking, but we are going to fix that as we hone in more and more on what we're doing. And having this layer locked like this, this is kind of where it really helps for doing these small ones in the background. Okay, so we've got that laid in there. And again, still a ways to go, but you can see where it's starting to kind of pulse move together. Um, so we'll keep pushing the underpainting more and start pulling in and tightening up. We'll switch brushes too. We're not gonna stay entirely with this uh, brush. This brush just works good for underpainting or clouds, um, but we'll definitely switch up to some of these others that we have. So I have a bunch of others in here that I use for like trees and stuff like that. And some watercolor brushes and all that as well. So we'll switch around from some of these. We're also gonna use some of the oil brush and the pen tool and stuff like that. So we're not gonna just stick just with this and we'll start pulling it in where it's not quite as cartoony looking as it goes, but we'll use a bunch of these other ones as well. So I think I'm going to go ahead and save this and we'll get started with part three and start pulling it in even more and even more and keep going through. This will probably take maybe five, six sessions and uh, then we can get a finished piece out of it. But I hope you're enjoying this. I hope you're learning a lot as we go through it and seeing how you can mix the colors and get that feel and that look for, you know, traditional painting kind of look to it but in digital and how art rage really does that okay so let me save this and then we'll move on to the next one